The Electronic Entertainment Expo, E3, the second vowel in the modern English alphabet cubed. However you refer to it, one thing that we can agree on is that the event is a high-profile annual gaming tradition. Except when it's not, but you get the idea. Much of E3's major ongoing appeal lies with its game announcements and reveals. It's like gaming Christmas, but the only gift you're getting is a teaser for something that won't be released for seven years. Well, that and the feeling of your face creasing with cringe like the top of a drawstring string bag as a host dies on stage before your very eyes. For some games, however, that exaggerated seven years comment would actually represent an improvement. Many of the games fortunate enough to get a showcase at E3 never end up coming out at all. And because the internet never forgets, we'll always have video of the promises that never came true and we're able to torment ourselves with them whenever we like. So let's do that now. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video games showcased at E3 that never released. Number 10. Arena of Fate Arena of Fate was teased shortly before E3 2014, but audiences got their first major look at it during the event with a full stage demo, no less. It was to be another free to play MOBA in an ocean of free to play MOBAs, and the game made it pretty far into development before getting the chop. The beta, or beta if you're looking at America about this, began in August of 2015 and ended in November. A second closed beta followed the year after, but Arena of Fate's Twitter page went silent just a few days later. It took until March of 2017 before publisher Crytek released a statement saying that their Black Sea branch had been sold to Sega. While they didn't state outright that the game had been cancelled, we've had no news about it since. Would Arena of Fate have been worth salvaging? We'll never know. We can, however, just go and play one of the countless other MOBAs. There's plenty of them, and they're all basically the same thing. Yeah, you heard me. I said it. I know nothing about MOBAs, and I'm not sure why I'm being so antagonistic, but still, I said it. Number 9. Pirates of the Caribbean Armada of the Damned Developer and Disney subsidiary Propaganda Games only released a couple of titles. One was the 2008 Turok reboot, and the other was Tron Evolution. It was the latter which doomed Armada of the Damned, making the name almost poetic. Armada of the Damned was set before the first Pirates of the Caribbean film, though it only occupied the film's universe rather than being a direct tie-in. It was also to be the franchise's first open-world game, allowing you to sail the seas and choose either a light or dark progression path. I think Fable crossed with Assassin's Creed Black Flag. It would have released before Black Flag though, so at the time that analogy would have been quite confusing. While there wasn't much pedigree behind the studio, the premise of the game was promising and it had the backing of Disney. For a while, anyway. The House of Mouse diverted most of the team and budget away from Armada of the Damned midway through production to focus on Tron Evolution. That game released two mediocre reviews, and Armada of the Damned ended up being cancelled. Disney then fired the 100 plus Propaganda Games team, seemingly to punish them for a poor business decision that they didn't even make. Aw, oh, thanks, Mickey. Number 8. Fez 2. The original Fez was one of the titles that helped solidify the indie game revolution that eventually took off in the early 2010s. In fact, it arguably had everything that would go on to define indie games in the public consciousness. Pixel art, a great soundtrack, brain-bending puzzles, and the debut of a promising new developer. Fans hoped for a sequel, and the financial and critical success of the game all but assured one. And sure enough, at the end of E3 2013's indie game press conference, a one more thing teaser trailer played finally announcing Fez 2. That was about as far as it went though. A month after that far from informative teaser, a very public Twitter implosion by series creator Phil Fish signalled the end of the project. He condemned the industry and in the process cancelled Fez 2. We'd love to tell you more about Fez 2, but the game barely got off the ground by the sounds of things. Whatever you may think of the man himself, it certainly seems that Phil Fish wasn't in the best of places at the time, so keep well Phil. Number 7. Battle Cry. The first game from Battle Cry Studios didn't go exactly to plan. Probably for the best they changed their name then, eh? Bethesda's new company was built for one purpose and one purpose alone, according to this job posting. They were looking for a monetization designer with experience in design and implementation of microtransaction systems and services. I am so very sad this game never came out. 
Battlecry was to be a free-to-play, team-based hero shooter. Much like Battleborn, Crucible, Lawbreakers, or Orcs Must Die Unchained, Bethesda's attempt to jump on the bandwagon shriveled away quicker than a horse's nadges in the snow. If Red Dead Redemption 2 is to be believed, anyway. After their own shooter was cancelled, Battlecry Studios at least got to shift their talents over to a major IP, and they set to work implementing multiplayer in the creation engine for, let me check here, Fallout 76, that poor, poor studio really can't catch a break. Number 6. The Agency – Covert Ops The premise behind Sony's cancelled online multiplayer game was a fun one. It was to be a spy-themed MMO that was designed more like a shooter than an RPG. PvP was there, but it wasn't the focus. Rather, the plan was for players to work together to complete various espionage missions for their respective agencies. Combat was going to be realistic, and there was a focus on strategy over skill. We first got a look at the agency at E3 2009 in a CGI trailer. It was not the most impressive of introduction, but it was an interesting concept. Then, almost as quickly as we learned about it, it was cancelled so that the team could work on two new MMOs based on the Planet Side and EverQuest franchises. Both of these were also cancelled down the line, by the way, so I suppose we can take solace in the fact that everyone ended up disappointed. They did release an agency spin-off game for Facebook, but considering that Facebook games are about as much fun as a sandpaper back rub, it wasn't much consolation. Number 5. Scalebound Scalebound might be the highest profile cancellation on this particular list, mainly because of how far into development it actually got. Even though the protagonist seemed like the most unbearable pillock ever to grace the medium, the would-be Xbox One exclusive was eagerly anticipated. It would have been one of the most graphically impressive releases the system had seen, and the sheer scale of the project would have put it up there with the industry's biggest titles. There were colossal battles, intuitive companion AI including your own personal dragon, both single-player and co Op, and the ability to seamlessly shift between ground combat and flight. This sounds a lot like Lair. Does it sound like Lair to anyone? It all seems pretty promising, and Platinum Games has a solid enough track record that fans were probably right to get excited. Then it all came crashing down when Microsoft pulled the plug more than four years into development after multiple trailers and live gameplay demos. Ultimately though, this may have been for the best. With the cancellation of Scalebound, Microsoft was free to focus on another big exclusive that would truly make the Xbox One worth owning. They're still trying to think of what that might be, but I'm sure they'll come up with it eventually. Got him! Number 4. Fable Legends Like many of these games, Fable Legends had an interesting concept. It was to be an online multiplayer game set in the Fable universe. There would have been a team of four hero players against a single, human-controlled villain. While the hero's gameplay would be your standard third-person action affair, the evil player would get a top-down real-time strategy perspective. It would have been like a tower defense game, with the villain putting down traps and units to stop the heroes reaching the end, with all parts played by real human players. It all sounds good so far. Much later into development, though, the now Peter Molyneux-less Lionhead Studios had an announcement. Fable Legends would be free to play and have microtransactions. Oh, my favourite! That wasn't actually what turned fans off, however. During the time that Fable Legends was still in development, most backlash came from the fact that it was a Fable game. With that name, fans wanted a single-player RPG, not a multiplayer one. We can't say we blame them, but since neither version of the game released, it's a bit moot to insist that one approach would have been better than another. Number 3. Sonic Extreme Back before E3 had become the mega show as we know it today, video game reveals weren't really a thing. When the internet was still in its infancy and games were still finding their feet, chances were that you'd have found out about a game's release when you saw it on shop shelves. The cancelled Sonic Extreme, though, was being pushed hard ahead of release. It even had a playable demo at the second ever E3 in 1996. Despite the fact it had a name so 90s that the mere mention of it should be accompanied by the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme, Sonic Extreme would have been the head Hedgehog's first foray into full 3D, rather than the isometric perspective the series was attempting around the time. Unfortunately, internal conflicts caused a period of development hell that would see Xtreme cancelled mere months after its E3 demo. While the footage looked, from our modern perspective at least, about as enjoyable as an evening of passion with Dr. Eggman, I'm sure that back when Sonic Xtreme was due to be released it would have been just smashing. I'm joking, of course. It would have been compared to its direct rival and all-time great, Super Mario 64, which would have ensured that Sonic's best years would have been behind him even more quickly than they were destined to. Number 2. Agent 
While the Wikipedia page for Agent says that it's still upcoming, we can assure you that isn't the case, at least not in its originally intended form. Agent was to be Rockstar Games' next big IP. While little is known, apart from the fact that it was to be a counterintelligence agent in a 1970s Cold War setting, you've got to imagine that it would have featured an open world like a stealthier version of Grand Theft Auto. It was to be developed by the same studio, after all. Originally announced in 2007, Rockstar's espionage em up was never formally cancelled. The trademark was held and renewed repeatedly for the decade that followed, but the Agent brand was abandoned in 2018. If they didn't even bother doing the paperwork to keep the name, that more or less guarantees that Agent isn't going to happen. The strange thing is, it's still listed on Rockstar's own website as an upcoming title. Should we read much into that? Will we be surprised at this year's E3 by the triumphant return of Agent? No! Of course not, it's probably just an oversight on the part of the website team. Number 1. Star Wars 1313 Star Wars 1313 was to be the origin story of helmet enthusiast Boba Fett. That's a prospect tantalising enough to get any Star Wars fan salivating. Unfortunately, LucasArts was bought by Disney partway through development, and that company quickly cancelled all LucasArts projects and handed Star Wars game exclusivity to EA for the following decade. I think that alone puts Disney in the ranks of the very worst companies ever. Announced with a trailer and a 15-minute demo at E3 2012, Star Wars 1313 looked visually impressive, but the only gameplay that was shown was third-person shooting and a basic point-to-point -point climbing mechanic. It would have most likely been great, certainly, but a lot of other games at the time were already doing those things very well. Of course, we didn't know at the time that the game would be focused on Boba Fett, which makes it far more interesting. In fact, we didn't even learn this fact conclusively until seven years after it was cancelled, when a screenshot was leaked. Whether that image was legitimate or not is debatable, but considering that it was definitely going to be about a bounty hunter, Boba Fett would certainly have been the obvious choice. As much as I'd have loved a game about Bosk, I'm not sure his lovely lizard face would have been quite as marketable. 